Greetings citizens. We are anonymous. We would like to take a few minutes and discuss some of the social and economic challenges facing our lives today. We would also like to offer alternative solutions to these problems that you may or may not agree with. Nevertheless, these issues need to be addressed and be taken seriously, as we start this year in the hopes of real change and equality. Hopefully, these solutions will benefit you, the average citizen, as well as the country as a whole. The first thing we would like to discuss is the looming Great Recession of 2007 and 2008, as well as where we stand as a society in the United States and in the world economy. To start, we all know the past eight years have proven to be the worst economic disaster the world has ever seen. We continue to follow the same rules and expect a different result. Throughout American history the financial system has collapsed and with new regulations has been rebuilt into the corrupting dysfunctional economic framework which is modeled throughout the world today. Eleven economic downturns have crippled America's workforce, put more people out of work, and, for those lucky enough to still have a job, have the wage gap raised more than 350% between the top CEO and the average worker. Not to mention the Great Depression of the 30s and 40s, where tens of millions of American citizens were unemployed, homeless and dying in the streets, due to disease and famine. The average unemployment rate then, was three times higher than it is today, and followed the same guidelines and regulations of a capitalistic system that is still in use to this day. This doesn't mean that we are any better off today than we were 80 years ago. With the debt ceiling recently raised to over $19 trillion, another total collapse of the financial system is just around the corner. This system is broken, and here's why. Most of the effort involving an explanation involves games of blame. Right now we are all aware of how the political game is played. The Democrats blame the Republicans, and vice versa. An endless chorus that seems to start to sound the same, as elected officials repeat themselves in endless speeches that portray the same message. Those on the left, like to blame bankers. Those on the right, like to blame poor people who have to take out loans and can't pay their bills. We need to acknowledge that in this economic system that we have, we have a name for it, and it's called capitalism. In this system, there are a set of rules. The average citizen plays by these rules because they really have no choice. Bankers make loans in order to make money. And corporations make money on everything you buy. The average worker tries to have a decent job, tries to earn an income that will support their family, and if their income is insufficient for their lifestyle, they borrow the money from the banks. This works out for the banks as they are eager to lend out the money you need in order to make a profit. This is the system as it was designed. Everyone having a role to play in the game. When society all plays by these rules, it reveals the total disaster we have as a system. We need to acknowledge that the system of rules itself is the problem. The system hopes everyone plays by the same rules and hopes that everything works out for the best, but it doesn't. This everyone for yourself mentality isn't working. This crisis of a financial system has led to the situation we're in today. In the United States today, 16% of the available workforce who are unemployed or underemployed and 20% of all abandoned factories and inventory lay empty and dormant. The Federal Reserve's rule for this is called the Capacity Utilization Rate. The Fed measures all of the empty abandoned factories, warehouses, equipment, tools and vehicles within the borders of the United States. The problem lies with a system which refuses to put workers back in those factories making American products for Americans again. The problem lies with a system that refuses to try to help its citizens make a decent living. The problem lies with a system that refuses to acknowledge the average citizen's right to be able to support their own families without the assistance of the government. It's the government's responsibility to listen to the people. We are the people. We are the 99%. We are demanding change in the system for all Americans. Now, and into the future. The main problem of the American economic system, is that it doesn't work very well and puts the burden on future generations to deal with the ever-increasing debt on everything they buy. Even the $15 an hour minimum wage may not be enough to curb the ever-increasing amounts of household debt the average citizen now owes. 
the banks are starting to use negative interest rates on the average savings account. This means you will actually end up paying a monthly fee to hold your money in your account. The banks are profiting right under your nose and you don't even know it. This system is stealing from the poorest Americans to gain a profit. The insanity has to stop. The problem for the corporations and the rich, who keep running a system which plunges us into a crisis after crisis, who have no effective way to prevent them from occurring, tend to polarize the nation into the rich and poor. We have an economic system that constantly provokes the masses of people into thinking they may be able to use the political system to offset the effects of the economic system. The danger for capitalism has been, if you actually give everyone the vote, that the vote will be the way, the political way, for the majority to recoup for themselves in politics, what they lost in the capitalist economic system. Giving the rights back to the employee and allowing the average worker to have a vote in what is done with the products and services they produce. Capitalism over the years has chipped away at democratic unions in the United States and have taken the decision making from the worker and has handed it over to the top 15%, the board of directors, whose job it is, to make all the decisions on where the company is going. In other words, those in Congress who lobby towards defending capitalism, usually end up working for it when they leave the political arena. You will never hear from the Democrat or Republican parties who protect the system, because they are cheerleaders for the system. Whatever they disagree about, it's never about the system. If you want to think critically, you have to go somewhere else and think of alternative ways to usher in a new system which will benefit the average citizen, keep jobs in America and narrow the gap between the top 1% and the rest of us. It's important not to become trapped into thinking only one way about our economical society. There are alternatives to this broken and unbalanced system we live in today. In other words we have to stop relying on the this capitalistic system to keep correcting itself. We need to change our way of thinking towards who we elect, who represents us, who makes decisions for us and take back the power from which has been stolen from us since the 1970s. One way we can take back the power from the system is to start working for cooperative enterprises. Cooperative enterprises are groups of companies which all help each other to create a product or service that benefits all who use it. Each employee in the company works Monday to Thursday, and on Friday all employees go to meetings. Meetings where the average worker convenes with the board of directors as a group, and collectively vote on which direction the company is headed. Each worker gets one vote. From the janitor to the CEO. The workers vote on wage increases, health and safety standards, as well as having complete control over how much the CAO can make. In most cases, it's no more than 5 to 10 percent more than the average worker. If all American companies followed this example, it would drastically increase productivity, re-establish the middle class and reform the education system to a level never seen before. If all employees had a say in where their company was headed, they would need a level education to reflect a higher level of understanding within the company they work for. Higher school sets will need to be achieved at the academic level in order to attain a job after graduating from college and university. This would raise the level of education to allow more graduate students the opportunity to go directly into the workforce a career which they have chosen to work for instead of being racked with debt and seeking employment that is not currently available. Each worker would be his or her own CEO, with a vote, and most importantly a voice. Taxes would be collected by the government from these companies and would go to directly offset the cost of post-secondary education. With no inflated top executive salaries to worry about, each company could then pay higher taxes to fund the education system from the ground up. The government would then subsidize these companies with technical assistance and loans, which in turn, will help grow the company, raise wages and hire more people. This would be known as a worker self-directed business administration, if the government would like to see these types of businesses develop and grow and if the government supported this type of business model, helped to develop cooperative enterprises everywhere, then all Americans would have the freedom of choice in a way they have never had it before. 
All people, young and old, would be able to compare what it is like to be able to work in a top-down hierarchical enterprise because they would be all around us, but for the first time we would have a choice, and would be as common as anything else around the neighborhood. The average worker would experience a higher level of involvement in their company, not only as a worker, but as a director, making decisions and positively affecting the community in which they live and work. This would benefit not only local communities, but would also spread throughout the country, and would be adopted by other countries from around the world. This would raise wages for the average worker in developing countries and increase their standard of living. This would allow for greater competition among companies to produce the very best products and services which will be passed down to the customer at a cheaper price. Customers would buy more locally made products and would employ more local workers. This would also increase the gross domestic product and decrease the national debt of countries willing to adopt this business model. It would pull people out of poverty and increase the middle class. It would also tax the richest in the country to allow a more balanced society and make achieving the American dream much more realistic. We the people, need to look to alternative solutions in order to correct the injustice of this capitalistic and corrupt society we all live in today. We need to elect officials who have our best interests at heart, and create laws to protect the average citizen and criminalize those who wish to profit off the poor and try to tax the American people for their own wealth and greed. We of Anonymous would like to thank you for watching this video and hope that you have learned that you do have a choice when it comes to defeating the elite at their own game. We need to change the system, not only for ourselves, but for future generations. We are Anonymous. We are Legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.